floor is yours. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. So uh, today we're going to cover uh, a cross-section of a lot of the new products that we've come out with in the last few months. And uh, I'm going to try to get through as many of these slides as possible because we actually have had a tremendous uh, number of product releases. And they're not necessarily just products unto themselves, but they can be formed into uh, various types of systems, all of which could be you know, referred to as, as solutions to help um, you know, getting you know, back to business. So uh, some of the things that we'll be covering today is uh, some new kits that we have to offer. They're very popular. Um, we've got uh, IP camera and NVR kits, uh, HD CVI, and also a new doorbell kit. And under the umbrella of uh, back to business solutions, we've got a number of uh, different thermal temperature uh, measuring devices uh, with some mass detection. And then we have another series of technologies, which we call problem solving ones. So these would be the, the night color solutions. Uh, we've got a new one with white LED, uh, smart motion detection, flow control, and some new license plate recognition cameras. So as mentioned, uh, we have offered uh, surveillance kits for quite a while now. They're very popular. Uh, at ADI and you know it's really a, a great solution for you know providing a, an easy all-in-one solution with products that are you know designed uh, and compatible with one another and one of the first new uh, new kits that we've had to offer we've never offered before is a new VDP kit so uh, I'm just going to play this short video I think it uh, encompasses uh, all the high points of it and I'll apologize in advance. I'm hoping that the audio will come through. Um, I should have pre-tested this, but anyway, here goes. Are you looking for a simple, cost-effective intercom solution? Introducing Dawa's new video intercom kit. Dawa's kit is a great starting option for residences and small businesses looking to improve efficiency with a digital entrance management system. By providing users with the ability to start small using a single door installation, this system offers a streamlined application that is scalable for future expansion of up to 20 connected doors. The kit includes an outdoor station that can be easily mounted to the entrance of a building for visitor use. A super wide 160 degree horizontal field of view provides a broad range of visibility to prevent unwanted visitors from hiding out of view. By utilizing HD video with two-way talk, the unit offers a convenient, high-quality experience. A 7-inch touchscreen indoor monitor provides communication with visitors, offering a secure option for anyone inside the building to quickly and safely manage access at entrances. The outdoor station connects seamlessly to mobile devices for remote viewing and access on the go. Simply plug in the power supply connect the supplied PoE switch and plug the network cables into the outdoor station and monitor. The indoor monitor can be used to set up and configure the outdoor station without the need for an additional laptop. Setup is quick and easy. Dallas Simple Solution provides a great option for small installations. Visit our website to learn more. Uh, great. So that gives you kind of a sneak preview as to, uh, you know, what that uh, kit has to offer. But, you know, regardless of what kit that you choose, uh, they do have some common value propositions here. Um, so as mentioned, uh, as a complete kit, it's sort of like one-stop shopping because, you know, you can get this uh, box that has, you know, all the products that you're going to need to be able to you know, create this uh, surveillance system. And these will encompass, you know, your cameras, uh, the back end storage, and then you've got some uh, remote software management options. So this provides you with a competitive way to, you know, get up and running, get started with a variety of different kits. And to keep the system up to date, we give you free software updates 
And one of the big advantages of our infrastructure with, with our solution is that you know, we don't really depend on any sort of recurring licensing uh, scheme or subscription fees. So particularly in the uh, you know, doorbell products and so forth, if you looked at some of the competition, uh, the more consumer focused ones, uh, they tend to want to you know, get you for a monthly fee and that kind of thing. And that's one of the great things about our solution is that you don't really have any recurring fees in that regard. Um, so your you know, upfront costs are you know, just that. Now the kits, uh, particularly with the solutions that have uh, larger numbers of inputs, um, they'll include, like say the eight camera kits will include generally about uh, maybe about six cameras or so. So you can actually expand as your needs may grow. And one of the great things as a reseller is that these can be more profitable for you and also saves money to the customer because generally if you purchase one of these kits, you'll end up saving about 30% roughly uh, compared to buying all of these parts individual. So there definitely is um, you know, a nice savings there uh, when, you, when you get these kits. So as mentioned, uh, we've got uh, a number of uh, new kits here that we'll be discussing. And some of the benefits that you get by getting the kits in particular for the uh, camera and recorder combinations is that we've now expanded the analytics or uh, video analytics capabilities in these things. And what's great about that is that it allows you to use your video surveillance system a lot more effectively because the systems will now automate, you know, detection of certain, you know, types of objects, uh, you know, attributes. And when it comes time for you to be able to review those, you know, video clips, it'll be a lot faster because you can do some filtering in there. So, uh, with these kits, uh, you can also get instant alerts with our free DMSS mobile app, which is available on both uh, iPhone and Android devices, and gives you the ability to detect on uh, intrusion, motion, or tripwire anytime that uh, the camera's been tampered with. Um, you also can add a micro SD card so that um, you'll have uh, backup capabilities there. There's other benefits in regards to installation. Um, most of the kits include cameras that have Arctic Pro technology, which extends the you know, temperature range at which these will operate at, in fact, down to about minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, there's also uh, a corridor mode. So if you're gonna be looking down a hallway, you can more easily orient the view so that you capture more of the important areas. And we've now, uh, added uh, starlight capabilities to more of these kits. So it's going to provide a lot better low light performance and uh, give you great uh, visual fidelity. Inclusive is true WDR. So of course that helps out with uh, harsh lighting conditions. And once again, you'll be able to uh, detect uh, moving objects and identify objects uh, up to extended uh, numbers of distances. So uh, this is kind of an overview of, of some of the new kits that we have to offer. So uh, one of them is the uh, N444E, and that's uh, got three four megapixel eyeball or turret cameras and uh, a video doorbell. So once again, these are the, uh, the new doorbell kits. And then we also have the, uh, the one that you see on the right hand side, and that's uh, got a, a eight channel recorder and that includes uh, five of the four megapixel uh, turret cameras along with that video doorbell. So these solutions uh, are great for a number of different applications, which you see here. And of course, um, you know, are available in a variety of different uh, inputs and sizes. So in regards to the video doorbell uh, kits, this chart or this table gives you, you know, all the, the main differences here. So with this uh, first kit here, 
uh, which has a four channel recorder. Uh, this comes with a two terabyte hard drive already built in and you can upgrade that if you want at a later time, I believe all the way up to about uh, six terabytes. And this uh, four channel recorder uh, kit includes three of the eyeball cameras as well as the video doorbell device. And then the eight channel kit includes five cameras as well as the, as the doorbell. And as with uh, most of our kits, there's a, a variety of accessories that you can get to you know, give you a lot more options in mounting, whether it be wall mount, pole mount, that kind of thing. Now with the doorbell module itself, uh, the DB11, uh, it also has PAR detection built in. So you can set it up to have it automatically send you a notification to your phone when it sees or detects a person uh, approaching. So as long as you don't have a lot of people, um, you know, going to that uh, front entrance, uh, that could be a really handy uh, feature there. And uh, as with the, uh, the video doorbell product, you have a built-in microphone and speaker so that it's easy to have two-way talk uh, with that person and actually see them uh, before you might elect to open the door. Now there's a, a variety of ways in which you can get feedback or you can interact with the doorbell device and you've got uh, a variety of solutions at the back end. So you know, the DB11 can be installed as a, a standalone unit where there's uh, no, no doorbell setup that's required because it can automatically, when a uh, button is pressed, you know, dial up the DMSS app on your phone. Now, if you want, you can also uh, purchase a chime kit here, which is the DS11, if you don't if you want to have enunciation locally within the, the facility. But thirdly, you have the ability to put a uh, back-end solution here, uh, which would be mostly DSS Express, so that um, whenever the button is pushed, then it would report the information to this, um, this device here. So here's a kind of an example as to some of the products that are included in some of these kits. So uh, the eight channel NVR has, uh, you know, eight POE ports on it. And it has video analytics capability on all the IP channels. So uh, the cameras themselves will typically do, you know, your intrusion and uh, tripwire types of things. And that will be recorded as well. So for the turret cameras, um, these are enhanced compared to the previous kits. So everything that's shown in red there are some of the improvements compared to the previous model. So now we have uh, starlight class sensitivity. Uh, we've got that Arctic Pro extended uh, temperature operation and also a uh, built-in microphone and higher quality audio. So those are some, some nice improvements that we've got and for the most part, uh, hasn't really affected the, the pricing. So as mentioned, the products will have true WDR, and that's really handy whenever you have these high contrast scenes where you know, details in the brightest and darkest areas might be hard to distinguish. So on the right-hand image, you can see you know, it's a pretty decent image, but, you know, once you get into the darker areas, it's, you know, kind of hard to see what's going on. So when you put WDR on, you'll be able to see a lot more details in those highlights and shadows. Now, installation uh, for these cameras are pretty easy. This example shows um, the eyeball camera. So basically, you just screw in the plate. Um, you align the camera into the slots and then just snap it on. So it's pretty easy for installation. Uh, likewise, for uh, the doorbell module itself, uh, installation is pretty easy. Um, you just need to supply power to the unit, either uh, 12 volts DC or I believe 24 volts AC. And the product communicates using Wi-Fi.
And one of the reasons I wanted to show the slide is that uh, it normally comes with this uh, standard flat base plate here, but, uh, and Michael, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but there is an optional angled face plate, which you see here. And this is pretty handy because, you know, I'm sure a lot of us uh, get a lot of Amazon deliveries these days, and usually the delivery guy <laughs> will, you know, uh, might leave the package right next to your front door, might not even ring the doorbell. So the PIR detection can be kind of handy. But the angle bracket allows for the camera to be able to see below um, kind of the waistline a little bit better so you can more easily see the packages that might have been left on the front doorstep there. Uh, now we'll take a look at specifically the uh, IP and HDCVI surveillance kits that we have to offer. So there's, uh, once again, you know, works with a variety of different common applications uh, that your customers may need for. And this is kind of like a, a, a great overview as to the different varieties that we have. So we have all the way from <clears throat> a four channel recorder with four of the eyeball cameras you know, all the way up to uh, 16 channel units here uh, that have 4K domes. So these are great for a wide variety of applications which are listed here from residential, you know, retail, bar, restaurants, that sort of thing. And uh, these are improvements. These new kits are improvements to the previous generation. And you can see uh, the model numbers for uh, the new ones versus the original ones. And as before, there's a wide variety of uh, optional uh, accessories that you can get, a lot of different uh, mounting options for the cameras that you can see here. And that makes it a lot more simpler for installation the way you want it. So this table uh, shows you some of the same information, but in a different way. But as you can see here for these first two kits, which would be the N, N44 4E is the four channel kit with four eyeball cameras. And then there's also an eight channel kit with six eyeball cameras, all four megapixel. And then when you go up to the N58 8D, uh, that's an eight channel NVR. And that includes six eight megapixel dome cameras. So different resolution, different form factor. And then uh, the last two kits here uh, use 16 channel recorders with either uh, 12 eyeball cameras or 12 of the dome cameras. So you've definitely got a lot of choice here. Uh, all of these recorders will include uh, a built-in installed hard drive, uh, whether it be anywhere from about uh, two terabytes uh, up to four terabytes on the 16 channel units. So another one, one thing to note, I think this will be useful for you too, is that, you know, particularly on the systems that have more channels, you know, you can add additional cam, you can purchase additional cameras if you need them. As you can see here that the four megapixel eyeball, the N42 BJ62, it's available as a individual SKU here, as well as the other cameras. But then the, the recorders themselves, um, some of these are not necessarily sold individually. So that is something to, to take note of. So if you have some situation where, um, you know, a component isn't working in one of these kits, uh, the return policy would be is that if it's available as an individual SKU, um, then you can return just that device. But if, you know, you have an issue with, say, uh, one of these recorders here that's not sold individually, then you would need to return the entire kit if you needed to get some sort of uh, warranty or repair on it. So just something to kind of note on that. I know that's come up a couple of times as far as, uh, you know, questions go. So here's kind of a, you know, an overview of the, the top features here that we'll see on uh, the cameras that are included in some of these kits. So for the eight megapixel turret camera, as mentioned, everything here in red is improvements compared to the previous generation. So you've got that, you know, extra low light capability with the Starlight technology, Arctic Pro, uh, the built-in mic and audio, 
And uh, the same holds true for the turret camera, which is shown in this picture on the right. Gives you those same kind of features. And uh, you've got also uh, built-in IR LEDs. In this case, it gives you almost about 100 feet of IR range here, too. And these are normally delivered with uh, fixed lenses, uh, fairly wide angle at about 2.8 millimeters. So here's an example of one of the NVRs that are included with the kit. So as mentioned before, it already has a pre-installed hard drive. Uh, it does include, you know, the latest codecs, including up to H.265+. It does the IVS video analytics uh, with the cameras. And as you can see from the diagram here, all the uh, convenient mounting, or excuse me, the connection points are here in the back. So you can have your choice of either a VGA monitor or a HDMI output monitor, at least on this eight channel unit here. So as with the four megapixel camera, you can see these uh, screenshots from the actual cameras themselves gives you, you know, great performance with true wide dynamic range, you know, giving you those details in the light and dark areas uh, when you've got those high contrast scenes. Now, we also have, uh, you know, analog style technology, uh, which we call HDCVI. And although these aren't quite as popular as, you know, maybe the IP kits, uh, these are great for those uh, customers who may already have existing analog cameras. I know there's a few out there still. They might have some expensive PTZs that work perfectly fine, but they don't want to get rid of. And an easy transition into high definition uh, is to use one of these HDCVI kits. So this gives you high definition uh, analog capabilities. Now we've got a number of existing HDCVI kits, which is shown in this table in gray. So not a lot of changes in some of those original kits available from anywhere from, you know, four channels uh, all the way up to 16 channels. Uh, the new one that we have is the X51B1E2. And that includes uh, a four channel DVR with a built in two terabyte, ter terabyte hard drive and then uh, four of the two megapixel eyeball cameras. So that's a nice new addition to the HDCVI line. And this table kind of gives you a comparison between you know, the old system and the new system. So as you can see, there hasn't really been a price change at all. It's still the same price. But the new system here, uh, let's see here is got the four BNCs and supports a additional two IP channels up to six megabits uh, per channel, megapixels, sorry about that. Now, that leads us into our thermal temperature monitoring solutions. So, you know, as you know that you know, when the pandemic hit pretty hard back in March, um, you know, there was a great need for, you know, businesses that were still open to be able to, uh, you know, assure the safety of their, you know, customers as well as their employees. So, you know, back at headquarters, they've already had some solutions that have been, you know, developed and, and used in the past to help automate the detection of elevated temperatures in humans. So back in uh, March or so, we introduced this high-end solution, which is called the thermal temperature monitoring solution. And this gives you uh, ultra high accuracy of about a half a degree Fahrenheit. And this as a high-end system also includes a black body calibration device, which is shown here on this tripod. And this is a constant, uh, uh, heat emitting device that allows for continuous calibration and accuracy uh, in a wide variety of, uh, you know, ambient temperature uh, ranges. So uh, as a high-end solution, um, this works great. We, we did sell quite a, a number of these things, but we did realize that, you know, at the high end of the market, there's certainly, 
you know, other things that we could bring out that can, you know, work for more, um, you know, mid-grade uh, solutions or even entry-level solutions. So we've got a couple of new things that we've added very recently, including the safety temp thermal temperature station, as well as a brand new handheld thermal temperature monitoring device here. So we'll take a look at the safety temp station. And I think this is probably uh, the solution that most of you would be uh, looking at and something that I think your customers would be of most interested in. It's got kind of like the best of both worlds, uh, you know, modest price as well as uh, good accuracy and some automated detection technologies. So the way the system works is that it has a, a built-in uh, seven inch touchscreen, which you don't have to use, but that gives uh, the person approaching some visual feedback. Um, so they can kind of see themselves. And this gives you uh, a range. Uh, you can operate it between about 60 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit here. And this gives you a temperature accuracy range of uh, about 0 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. And when the person, this can actually measure the temperature of a person all the way up to about uh, anywhere from one to six feet. And whenever there's an elevated temperature that's detected, then you'll get an automated uh, sound prompt, uh, as well as a visual indicator on the front. And then the back end, uh, which we've got a number of different options, will give you alerts too. But as you can see here, you've got you know the seven inch uh, touchscreen here, and then the actual thermal module is attached here on the top. So the base unit itself is this um, ASI 7213X. And we've got a couple of different uh, mounting options here. You've got the desktop mount, so you would just take the standalone unit and mount it to here, and this provides a, a handy uh, desktop optimized solution. And then if you want more of a freestanding option, we've got this floor mount here, which is about five feet tall. And uh, there's some assembly required because you would have to take the standalone unit and then uh, assemble it into this floor mount. Now we've gotten some feedback that, um, you know, some customers would prefer a more stable uh, setup. You know, this is rather, you know, kind of tall, perhaps a bit top heavy. So we just introduced a new base plate, uh, which uh, it's kind of weighty. It's about 24, uh, excuse me, 20 pounds. And this will increase the stability of this floor mount here. So the way you would uh, set up the solution is that you would place this near where people are going to be entering. And as another uh, note to backtrack a bit is that all of this, these solutions need to be used indoors. Uh, in fact, any thermal temperature measurement system, um, regardless of the manufacturer, they're all gonna say, use this indoors. They're just not really designed to work outdoors because there's just too many you know, environmental changes that can affect uh, the readings. So you've got it indoors. Uh, the person comes up to the front uh, in front of the unit. It'll start to measure the temperature. If it's elevated, then you need to push them into a uh, secondary inspection. I just realized that that's uh, misspelled there. <laughs> but um, whatever system that you have, you need to have a secondary inspection area if you know, you want that person to, you know, potentially continue on. You need to have a clinical thermometer to double check and to make sure that that person indeed has an elevated temperature or perhaps it was, you know, a misreading. And, you know, misreadings can happen sometimes, especially if the ambient temperature outside is at a big delta compared to on the inside because these, these devices are really measuring skin temperature, at least in most cases. So if it's really hot outside and you come inside and you measure somebody immediately, it's possible to get a, a false reading. So once again, uh, you always wanna have a secondary inspection area with a clinical grade thermometer to uh, make a proper secondary assessment. So with the solution, uh, you know, some of the key features here is that, A, it's contactless. So, you know, there's no touching of the individual. Um, it's also uh, reasonably high accuracy. 
and gives you these automated temperature alerts. Now, uh, one neat feature built into this unit is mask detection. So this is an optional feature that you can enable, and this will determine whether or not the person that is requesting entry uh, is wearing a mask. So if they're not wearing a mask, it can uh, automatically play a you know, canned message, you know, please wear a mask. And I believe you can also uh, record your own uh, customized message if you want. And then this information will then be passed on to the back end solution, whether you're using you know, your cell phone uh, or uh, the management software. Now, if you want to be able to record uh, these events and you want to use more of an appliance style NVR, then we recommend this NVR 5216-16P-I. Uh, so this particular one is designed for maximum compatibility of that thermal access control terminal. So this supports a recording and snapshot with the temperature information. So this screenshot on the right hand side is what you would see in the local monitor as someone comes up to the system. Uh, it will uh, you know, determine some attributes, uh, including relative age range, whether or not they're wearing a mask, and then also the temperature. So if it is elevated temperature, then you'll get an extra warning here. And of course, this is all tagged into the recording for easy searching uh, at a later time. Um, you can also optionally use the face identification uh, capabilities here. So if you have a database of all your employees, you can have them uh, cross-checked against that. Now, there's also a couple of other back-end options that you can use. Um, if you prefer to have a, a software-based solution, we've got this uh, software package called DSS Express. And, you know, for those of you familiar with uh, DSS Express a little bit, there's been some changes here. Uh, we used to have a, you know, free version of DSS Express called DSS Express S. And then now we're, you know, transitioning more for a, uh, uh, you know, licensed version of this. And certainly if you want to use it with the thermal solutions, then you need to get the special licensed version. But that's, of course, if you just want to use this, you know, software back in. But this supports a real-time display. You get alarm pop up with elevated temperatures. You can get additional data statistics and, you know, export a report on all the different people that entered, you know, how many might have had elevated temperatures. Um, and then you have a lot more power in doing uh, alarm uh, linkages to do special things like elevated temperature. Maybe you want to take uh, pictures from multiple cameras from multiple angles. Maybe you want it to be sent to a, you know, third party alarm system. So you've got a lot of flexibility there. Now, something that doesn't cost uh, anything at all is we've got the mobile app, DMSS, and that will support a real-time display with the temperature overlay. So you can see the example here on the right, um, our little test situation here, and you can see the uh, temperature right on top. And then you also get a kind of a list view here, in which case uh, you can see the time and date when those occurred. So here's kind of the, the product list and the things that we're talking about here. So once again, if you want to use uh, DSS Express, uh, the model that you would need is the DEX base license. Um, and just note that you it you know if you if you're looking on the price list, you need to select the version that supports the thermal temperature measurement. Uh, as mentioned, you also have this uh, optional uh, option of using the appliance NVR, which is the 5216-16PI shown here, as well as the DMSS mobile app. Uh, now we can go on to uh, the new handheld temperature monitoring camera. And uh, as a, a handheld device, it does have the ability that you can, uh, you know, mount this on a tripod, but uh, the main, you know, different one of the, the the big differentiations between this device and as an entry level device is it does require an operator to be 
in front of the unit. And that's kind of a big difference between this and the other solutions. So there needs to be somebody there to kind of, you know, push the button in order to measure the temperature. So this has got, you know, a fairly modest uh, thermal sensor in there, 256 by 192. So, you know, that's going to, you know, require, uh, you know, the measurement distance isn't going to be as far. I think it's about three feet is the furthest that it'll go. But it's still got pretty decent temperature accuracy, about uh, 0 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. And you've got a couple of different options on how you can connect this to an external system, like a computer uh, via USB. And there's also a SD card slot in here, so you can actually either take images or video clips uh, to the unit itself. And it conveniently has a rechargeable uh, battery, which lasts, I guess, the better part of about eight hours or so. So the way this works is that, you know, as a temperature gun, there's actually a little trigger on there. And then um, you need the, to pull the trigger uh, a number of times, depending on whether or not you want to capture a still image or actually do a recording. So um, here's some screenshots as to what you see on the uh, LCD screen here in the case of image capture or actually a recorded event. And of course, under actual use, you're probably gonna wanna have an SD card slot in here, uh, which these screenshots, uh, there wasn't one installed. So that's why you get that little warning there. So um, with this product, there is a separate PC software app that you can download and install. And this is uh, free, I believe. And this is called DH Thermal. So this is kind of a, just a very short video clip to kind of show you what you see on your computer that might be connected to the system. And just note, it's not a network connection, it's gonna be USB. So here uh, we've got the system set up and one of our trainers pointed at himself, measured the event. And then um, through the application, you can actually Actually, this is going by kind of quick here. Uh, sorry about that. I was hoping to pause it here. So through the application, you can actually locate, uh, you know, on the computer where those still images are stored. In this case, we're looking at the PC video clips. And if you double click on them, they'll automatically open up your preferred viewer and then be able to show you the clip of the measurement as well as the actual temperature that was measured. Now that leads us to the high-end solution, which in, uh, is inclusive of you know, all these devices here. Even though these are all sold separately, you are going to need really um, all of these three major components here. Uh, the NVR, if you wanna do the recording. So, this high-end solution has a couple of uh, additional benefits. Um, this gives you the higher accuracy up to about a half a degree Fahrenheit. Uh, you've got some EPOE technology, so you can actually mount the camera from the recorder from pretty great distances. You have the ability to do some uh, face ID and you can get live alerts to both uh, besides the recorder, but also the mobile app. Now, one of the nice things about these systems is because it's a higher performance solution, you can uh, do detection longer distance for here. And even though we're not really pushing it too much because uh, the FDA and others are not recommending it, this will actually uh, monitor for more than one person at a time. So we're not really specking how many that is, but um, you know, people can walk in front of the solution. It will automatically do uh, the measurement and you can do this with people walking by. They don't actually have to stop in front of the, the unit. Um, so this is great for those applications where, you know, maybe you've got a lot of people going by, you've got, uh, you know, maybe you're using it in a, you know, railway station or bus station where you've got a lot of people coming and going. So um, you get a lot uh, greater efficiency here. Now, some of the other, uh, there's some other performance aspects here, which are not necessarily included in some of the other solutions, but um, it will still uh, do a pretty good job of measuring temperature 
uh, even when people are wearing any sort of uh, things that will obscure the face, like uh, sunglasses or a hat or maybe a you know, medical mask and that kind of thing. Um, you know, FDA guidelines, you know, really say that you should be, you know, having a clear view of the person's face. So um, even though, you know, we provide these kind of additional performance aspects, you know, it's always best to, to follow those FDA guidelines. But, uh, you know, a couple of people, a couple of things uh, that's also kind of nice is that, you know, we use the, the AI built into the system so we can tell that, you know, a person is holding a coffee cup or, you know, a hot drink and it's smart enough to know that, oh, well, that's not a false reading of someone's, you know, temperature. So that's uh, kind of nice about the solution. So here's just an informal video clip that we've made about a live alarm situation with this uh, high-end temperature solution. And this is the local interface that you would see on the NVR. So what you've got is the camera itself is hybrid. So it's gonna have a, a visible camera, a visible sensor, which you see on the left-hand side. And then obviously the colored one there is gonna be the thermal. And as it's detecting uh, people and then temperatures, that's going to pop up and populate on this right hand column here. And as mentioned before, you know, it's going to do some other uh, attempt at video, uh, excuse me, object attributes, you know, guesstimate the age, the gender, that kind of thing. So I'll just go ahead and play this here. So as you can see, uh, the person walking in front there, it actually draws a box around them, and then the live temperature display appears on the top. So Michael here is rubbing his hands together to simulate a high temperature, and then uh, as you can see here on the right-hand side, it's flagged as a high temperature and can also set off an additional alarm output as well. Now the high-end solution, <clears throat> because it has... Uh, more technology. It can also attempt to, you know, more accurately determine the temperature because it will look first to the medial canthus, uh, which is kind of like the tear duct of the eye. So as long as the eyes are not obscured, uh, this high-end solution will try to measure temperature there. And because that is very close to a major uh, blood vessel within the head, that actually is, you know, more representative of the core internal temperature. So you'll get a better reading from that. And, you know, that's also what separates this solution from a lot of competition. You know, if you've read some, you know, third party uh, reviews, you'll know that the system has been rated uh, pretty well. And that's in, you know, no small part having to do with the fact that it's measuring this uh, medial canthus. But in the event that that's not available, like if the person is wearing glasses, thermal systems can't uh, see anything beyond glasses. So it will then uh, measure the next best place, which will be, you know, right around the forehead. So this gives you kind of a quick overview as to some of the recommendations, uh, best practices for setup. And, you know, here you can see the setup height of the camera here. And because the system uses this black body calibration device, this actually has to be in view of the thermal camera. And it's usually mounted at about the same uh, head height as the person walking by. Um, and the distance that you can uh, do this is uh, about 10 feet here or so. So the black body device is pretty handy because if you don't have one of these things, then ambient temperature changes or even humidity can affect the accuracy for solutions that don't necessarily have it. So this is definitely going to be the best solution uh, if you can afford it. But as a high-end solution, you know, it might be beyond the range of uh, some of our some of your customers. Now, as mentioned, uh, one of the reasons that you can't you know use these things outdoors is because you know the ambient temperature outdoors might affect the skin temperature which would affect the readings so um, a couple other things regarding the setup that's really good to know is that um, you want to avoid you know pointing the camera where there's direct sunlight or backlighting going on so if you've got you know big uh, lobby windows that kind of thing you want to point it so that it's not looking there 
You don't want to have too many reflective surfaces. And you want to uh, keep it away from areas that's got, you know, heaters and that kind of thing. So if you know that there's going to be a big temperature differential between the outside and the inside, then we recommend, you know, setting up some stanchions like you would see at maybe, you know, the airport uh, security areas where you kind of, you know, herd people through um, kind of a different line. So the idea here is, is that by doing this, uh, it allows time for the skin temperature to normalize to, you know, that of uh, you know, the ambient air temperature inside the facility. So here's kind of a, a quick overview of the, the different system components here and all the part numbers. So the main parts, of course, is the uh, black body unit uh, and this special camera here. We do have uh, a, additional cameras besides this ones that we do offer now, which have um, some lower resolution, which, you know, affects the detection distance. Uh, we didn't really cover that here, but that's available. Um, and then we have the, the back-end storage solution. And there's a couple of other things that we recommend, um, you know, if you need it, the power supplies. Um, if you are going to be mounting this temporarily, you're probably going to put it on a tripod. So we do sell those. But what's important is that you would need the mounting plate. So what this mounting plate does is it adapts the standard tripod mounting screw. I don't know what the the actual specs are in that, but if you don't buy our tripod, then of course you can get just a standard one, but make sure you get the mounting plate. And you're going to need one for the camera as well as a black body device. Now, we also offer this as a kitted part number. Well, I should say it's a virtual kit. And um, ordering through ADI, you would just use this number here. Oops. Um, and then that would be inclusive of all these devices that you see down here. And just note that this kit doesn't include uh, the power supply, switch, or the display. So this goes down to which solution to choose. So here's a table I created that kind of shows the highlights of each one of them. And uh, one of the determining factors is what kind of accuracy that you need. So for you know, a lot of smaller applications, you can probably get by with having about, you know, 0 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. So the entry level and mid-level solutions are really great for that. If you need higher, you know, accuracy, then you go with the high-end solution here, which gives you about uh, 0.54 Fahrenheit. Now, also, uh, the environment that you're going to be using it in uh, is an important consideration um, with the entry level and mid level solutions because they don't, you know, have a black body device that you can depend on. You know, you want to use these in a more controlled or stabilized environment where there's going to be less variation in, you know, temperature and humidity. Whereas the high end solution, it's a lot more forgiving. Uh, so you can have uh, your temperatures and humidity might vary uh, substantially. Also uh, important consideration is the distance at which you want to do the measurement. So in the case of the entry level, you're limited to about three feet. It's gotta be pretty close. The mid level, you can do about six feet or so. And then the high end solution will do up to 23 feet. And also the people flow is you know, a good consideration. So with the entry level solution, once again, is that you, know, you can only measure one person at a time and it does require an operator to be there to um, you know, press the trigger. And with the mid-level mid -level solution, it's pretty much designed for one person at a time. The subject really should you know, stop in front of the unit until they get measured. And then technically the high-end solution, uh, people don't actually have to stop and we could record perhaps several people per second. Now I included the slide. This is actually, this was created a couple of months ago. I don't know if this has changed, um, but it would be important to note. Um, we can get back to you on this if things have changed, but um, the last I'd heard that we didn't really have too much loaner gear for the solution. I know that some of our TCs 
uh, have these things, you know, in their region, it might be possible uh, to obtain something like that. You just need to, you know, contact your, you know, your local uh, regional sales manager on that. Um, due to the current situation, I don't believe that we're accepting returns on this. So, you know, it's a good idea to do your research first um, to make sure that this is really, you know, what you're going to need. Uh, the warranty is a little bit different on these. Um, you get about one year warranty on the thermal camera and the black body uh, interface, but you can get an extended warranty for the black body device. So you can get these extended warranty cards, uh, which can extend um, one or two additional years for it. Now, we do have another product which we recently added, which is also considered under the umbrella of a back to business uh, solution, but we've got a special face mask detection camera. So one thing to know is this is not a thermal camera, it's a regular visible light camera, it doesn't measure temperature, but it has AI in it that's specifically designed to detect whether or not a face mask is worn or not. And if that person is not wearing a face mask, it provides an active alarm. So there's a built-in mic and speaker to alert subjects that say, you know, please wear a mask. And um, you can use the internal canned message, uh, or you can also customize the message that goes in there. And one neat thing to note about this camera is that the speaker in there is pretty robust. It's bigger than, um, it's certainly more powerful than the speakers that we put in the past. So uh, it has greater volume. So if this is mounted like up on a ceiling or something, you'd probably be able to hear it pretty clearly um, up to maybe about 20 feet or so. I, I don't know if there's a specification regarding that, but it, it is fairly loud as compared to a kind of a normal camera. Um, another thing of note is that it does provide dual illumination. So besides IR LEDs, it has a white light LED. And if that person isn't wearing a mask and that feature is enabled, then the white light can flash. And this has got uh, five megapixels. So now we'll go on to a section that we call the problem solving technology. So we'll talk about night color, SMD, and a few other things. So, you know, we've had the night color uh, product line out for quite a while. And the original products um, were designed with a number of technologies to provide exceptional low light uh, illumination, excuse me, uh, low light visibility compared to our regular cameras. In fact, they were so good that there's no uh, supplementary lighting included. So there's no built in LEDs or IR or anything like that. So as long as you've got about one lux ambient lighting there, you'll get you know, full color, um, you know, rich pictures. Um, and that has additional benefits such as, you know, being completely covert because you have no LEDs, there's no visible glow, and you've got some other advantages such as, you know, without those IR LEDs, there's no heat source and there's gonna be less bugs that it might attract. However, um, there's been some interest in being able to provide, you know, white, uh, excuse me, um, you know, full color illumination when there's zero lux, when there's zero light outside. So we've added a new camera that has a built-in white light LEDs. So um, the LEDs can also act as a deterrent, but just note that it's really, uh, you know, best for dark applications where there's, there's no lighting at all. So this kind of gives you an overview as to, you know, what you get with the standard night color. And, uh, What you'll get here is, what's interesting here is if you take a look at this uh, EPOE 4 megapixel night color camera, you know, you're getting about four times the brightness compared to a standard IR camera. So this particular uh, camera, I think this was taken pretty late at night. I think this was about uh, 1053 PM. So you can see this looks like daylight, but trust me, it was very dark outside there. And um, our, one of our uh, folks on the uh, technical vetting team uh, set this up at his house, and these are actual screenshots that, that he did uh, for this camera. 
So a couple things to note about this new addition, the one with the white LED uh, lights in there, is that by providing the sup, uh, supplemental lighting is that it helps to prevent any sort of uh, motion smearing, which tends to be the case with, uh, you know, cameras that don't have, you know, great low light illumination specs. Um, but one thing to note is that the LEDs are designed to turn on automatically once light levels become low. And then uh, when light levels return back up to normal, uh, then it will go ahead and turn off. Um, so as a, a premium camera, this has a number of things, uh, true wide dynamic range, it's got a built-in mic, uh, has a pretty full suite of analytics plus functions, functions including people counting, uh, perimeter protection, uh, a few other things here, along with uh, Arctic Pro technology. So here's some screenshots of the white LED. So you can see here with the, you know, uh, a modern uh, cell phone here. This is the view that you get in this uh, uh, situation. And here's with kind of a regular IR camera. And then you can see here the white light with the LED on. So pretty, pretty huge difference in technology and performance with these new cameras. Uh, here's uh, another one where we're comparing the night color cameras uh, with uh, regular uh, and our starlight cameras and you can see there's a you know the starlight camera will do a pretty good job uh, this is the class of cameras that you'll find in the new kits that we just talked about it'll provide you know uh, much more clarity in these low light situations compared to a non starlight camera but then you know the new night color camera with white LED will give you you know perfectly saturated image in full color so here's um, some other comparisons uh, between different uh, uh, cameras here. So you can see here that, <clears throat> uh, you know, the night color cameras, which are in the upper left-hand side and the, um, well, actually it's, it's the, the first one here, the first two on the top and the one on the right here. So here, is some a little bit of differences in the feature sets between uh, the original night color and the ones with the LEDs. And here's some good examples where to use. So as mentioned, uh, the one with the white LEDs, great for when there's um, no ambient light. Um, if you need covert applications, you need it for covert applications, or you don't wanna worry about bugs, then you might wanna use the one without the white LED. And these are some good rules of thumb here as to you know when you would use it and when you would select something else. Um, here's a video clip that kind of shows you uh, the performance. Uh, this is actually taken, I think, uh, close to headquarters here. But you know, here at 9:30 at night, you can see the background is is pretty dark, but you know you're going to see very clearly full color details with this camera. So this will work great in uh, a wide variety of you know applications which are listed here, uh, all of which where you would expect activity in the evening time where you want to be able to see you know full color. <clears throat> and here's just a comparison between uh, you know the different options here. Uh, the new one, which is in this first column here, is going to be a turret camera, whereas the ones without um, the LEDs are available in either dome or uh, bullet style. Um, oof, boy, we're ready, running out of time here. Um, I'll try to briefly go through this. Uh, smart motion detection is something that we introduced uh, maybe about a half a year ago or so. And this is an extension to our analytics, which is designed or optimized to really detect people or vehicles moving within the camera's field of view. So the great thing about this is that SMD is inclusive of most of our cameras and recorders nowadays. And it's very easy to, to set up. Uh, it works across the entire view of the whole camera. There's no drawing or defining a detection area. You just need to basically turn it on. 
So here's an example of uh, how SMD works here is that, you know, if you want to only record whenever there's motion, then you would need to enable not only uh, SMD, but also uh, regular motion detection. So the addition to this is that it will help reject more false positives. So when this thing is enabled, um, it will actually, you know, uh, take metadata and store information as to whether or not it was a detected person or vehicle. Um, and this is the smart search here, um, which will save time during the review process. So this little video here will show you kind of the report uh, that you see in the, uh, uh, the recorder. So anytime you click on a, a link, an event, it will automatically pop up a window and then play back that particular scene. And so in that case, that was a vehicle that it had detected. Now, something that uh, we recently introduced to is uh, an application solution that we call uh, flow control. So this uses a combination of different uh, devices, which would be people counting cameras, uh, special DSS software compared uh, combined with our digital signage. And it's designed to really to automate capacity tracking and uh, soft control of entrances. So this is great for, you know, like larger department stores that would be like an interior mall. And once again, helps to uh, keep track of how many people are coming in here. So this is, you know, uh, kind of a simple uh, diagram of all the different things that are going on here but you're gonna need DSS Pro or DSS Express as the backend solution. Um, you might have a local display, excuse me, a, a NVR here as well if you want, but you can do the recording directly on DSS Express. But at the entrance and exits of your, uh, you know, presumably retail establishment, you need to have a people counting camera at the entrance and the exit. And then the software, the back end here, will keep count of all the people that come in and go and then you can program this to start producing warnings when capacity is beginning to reach. So with the digital signage, this will tell people, oh, wait, uh, it's to capacity. Please wait for the green light to show before you enter. So once again, this goes beyond like a, you know, regular people counting camera. Um, this makes the automation of, you know, capacity detection much better. And, you know, it could eliminate having to have some sort of compliance officer standing in front saying, you know, you can go in or, or leave. So this is kind of a neat uh, way of taking advantage of the digital signage, which can also push up, you know, commercial advertisements and that kind of thing. So this is one of many things that can do, but uh, flow control was recently added to, uh, you know, our lineup. So this is just a little display uh, a table of, uh, you know, the different capabilities. There's two different software options that you uh, can use here. You're probably not going to use DSS Pro, but, you know, uh, with DSS Express, you're going to need the licensed version. Um, it can support up to 16 people counting cameras. And you get a, a preview of the people flow control and uh, if you need to do multi-store management, that's when you would have to go up to DSS Pro. And last but not least is we just recently introduced some license plate recognition cameras. And this is pretty new for us, uh, at least in this market. We've had LPR cameras internationally for quite a while, but you know, because we have so many different types of license plates here in North America and uh, to a lesser extent, perhaps up in Canada, um, all we've had are really license plate capture cameras. So these new LPR cameras are designed to actually, you know, detect the license plate, read it, and then take note of it to um, the NVR on the back end. So we've got two different models here. The one on the right-hand side uh, is the more uh, basic model, and this will de has detection speeds up to, well, I uh, have Michael correct me on this. We might have changed this here. Um, but this has a lesser detection speed compared to the one on the right, uh, the one on the left, which has a, a 10 to 50 millimeter lens. So just note that we have two different uh, styles. 
you know, primarily designed for uh, different detection speeds and distances. <laughs>